this area, Shoal Creek Boulevard, that you're turning onto now uh, is a similar project that was completed in 2020 where, you know, it, it's a, a bike lane that is added to an existing roadway. And that roadway has existed previously to serve only cars, and that's what people are used to. But if you have a, a bike lane that's, that's added in, you know, the thought is over time, folks will understand the required slowing of speeds on that road and see the benefit of having more access and more uh, safety for cyclists. And especially on that Shoal Creek Boulevard stretch, we've just seen tons of use. It, it's exploded with users from, you know, very experienced cyclists to kids whose parents now feel comfortable letting them ride down the road to a park or to a friend's house unassisted. So it has just been a huge change in um, perception and accessibility that we're happy with. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and that was Ivy Kaiser, Executive Director of the Shoal Creek Conservancy. And this is an excerpt from my recent uh, interview with her, uh, episode 148, uh, which you can, if you'd like to see the entire interview, uh, you can just uh, click on the card right up there. Otherwise, uh, there'll be an opportunity at the end of this video. And in this excerpt, Ivy and I give you a chance to feel what it's like to ride up the Shoal Creek Trail on up to Shoal Creek Boulevard and um, up Shoal Creek Boulevard, down Shoal Creek Boulevard a little bit. That's what you got to see in that little cold open right there. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right to it. I hope you enjoy it. And again, uh, you can click on the link at the end uh, to watch the entire episode. Thank you so much. Enjoy. This is actually the terminus down at Lady Bird Lake. And so that con connection between the Shoal Creek Trail and the Butler Hike and Bike Trail. And uh, I'm gonna be turning left here and heading up. And the one thing that you had mentioned that uh, that I'll, I'll turn this over and let you narrate it is the fact that yes, we're connecting to some pretty important places. And speaking of signage, you know, you can have the sign that basically says, okay, we're going underneath Cesar Chavez here. Uh, mm -hmm. So take it away. What, what other cool stuff are we gonna see here? Sure, so right now on the, the left side, if you were on the ground, you'd be approaching the new uh, central library. So that is going to be in view, I believe, in a second. Um, there's also the butterfly bridge that's on the right hand side of the screen that you are going to bike under in a minute. Uh, but these are definitely some areas downtown that pe people typically use the Shoal Creek Trail to get to and that we're hoping more people will use once there's signage, especially down at that Lady Bird Lake trailhead uh, yeah. to direct people how to get up to the Shoal Creek Trail. Some people go right past it, never knowing what kind of amenities lie just to their north. So if you're using this segment of the, the Shoal Creek Trail, you might have had a moment where you're getting right about here in the video, you're going up a uh, trail that goes near this Third Street trestle and pedestrian bridge, uh, all these locations around here, you've noticed maybe that there's an overgrown bridge with poison ivy and some other plants. That is part of, all of this is part of the Cypress and Shoal Creek project site that Shoal Creek Conservancy and Downtown Austin Alliance are working towards. Um, the goal is many, many different projects. It's very multifaceted. One of which is to actually rehabilitate that trestle into a public plaza that overlooks Shoal Creek. So hopefully uh, we will have a mini Highline type plaza uh, next to that pedestrian bridge in the near future. Uh, another project would be to reroute the creek, I'm sorry, reroute the trail underneath both of those bridges so that you do not have to do that switchback move that you just did on your, your bike in the video. Right. So instead of coming up to this third street level, you could go right underneath right here on the bridge and continue straight on your way. Uh, but if you are up on this bridge and you're going up to the third street level, you'll see a variety of amenities like this pedestrian bridge, like the future plaza on the railroad trestle. And then this plaza that currently exists, Margaret Mosier Plaza, uh, this is one of the many areas that are on that third street corridor that we are proposing to improve and 
just make it a much more welcoming site and, and place to hang out uh, for folks who are coming through on bike and, and on foot in the downtown area. So many plaza improvements are part of that Cypress and Shoal Creek plan as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, you, I think you had mentioned before uh, that it, that's that bridge, that trestle bridge is on the National Registry. Is that correct? Yes, yes. We just had a kind of announcement celebration uh, for the listing on the National Register of Historic nice. Places. So nice. uh, we, we know that it's not going anywhere, but we are hoping to see it improve. Exactly. Exactly. And now we're doing that switch back down onto the other side and getting back down onto the, the Shoal Creek Trail here. And uh, and we, we, we notice a difference here. This is definitely much narrower through this particular segment here, which is a little concerning, saying, can, <laughs> considering that that building to the left just got built. Ah, come on, guys, a little wider. Uh, but anyways, that's that's life. Uh, I end up going over this particular bridge here because this is one of the bridges that I watched be set in place, uh, you know, within the last five, six years or so, uh, and really connecting over to another suite of businesses in another part of downtown, uh, where before you'd have to go all the way around to get to this area. So kind of a neat little, uh, again, it's all about connectivity to meaningful destinations. So, and then I swing. Right. And, and this is another bridge, another kind of trailhead area where if you aren't very familiar with the trail, you would not yeah. necessarily know how this relates to the rest of the Shoal Creek Trail system right. and how it relates to the rest of the downtown destination. So this is going to be another site where a lot of that critical signage, I think, is going to make it feel more welcoming for new trail users. And then now we, we sort of dip down below and go underneath um I think that's West Street um, that we're, we're mm-hmm. going to go underneath here. There's a and small pedestrian bridge and then West Avenue right above us. West right here. Avenue. There you go. Thank you very much. And then this is another segment that is uh, relatively new. Again, within the last mm-hmm. five, six years or so, this was completely redone. Uh, I can remember when you know, about eight years ago after we first got here, there was a massive, massive flood through here and this whole area was completely ripped up and everything. And so this was, uh, again, another example of sort of the newer treatment and what it looks like. But soon we're going to be into some some older uh, areas, uh, hence the, the areas that you were talking about before, where clearly the size is it's a little it's a little constrained and a little bit narrow. Um, mm-hmm. the other neat thing that, that as we look at here, we look at some of this, this older bridge, this might even be a historical bridge. It's hard to say, uh, kind of looks cool. Um, but you also see the brand new building there. So there's been a lot of development all along through this area. Um, and so that brings up the point that this really is a truly a, a very, very meaningful, uh, transportation corridor for active mobility for many people. And, and again, this is that segment I would ride to REI. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that it's not a surprise to anyone that the number of residents, the number of workers in this area is growing by the day. And so that really highlights the need for improvements, you know, safety improvements and otherwise along this stretch. Uh, you just went past a couple of pedestrians and I'm sure that felt pretty tight, especially without a barrier to your right protecting you from falling into the creek. <laughs> yeah. So there's um, there are a lot of opportunities for improvement here with width, with protective barriers, um, you know, lighting under bridges, yeah. uh, the directional signs that we talked about that are already on the way, and then things, just amenities like benches and trash cans and pet waste stations. So that's another uh, one of those priority projects that was mentioned on that uh, top five project list that we looked at briefly earlier, um, where, you know, in the next couple of years, Shoal Creek Conservancy is really hoping to hone in on all of those amenities that would add just a little more comfort to the trail experience. And, and we're working this fall to start by doing a trail amenities inventory. Uh, we are currently hiring an intern to do that, uh, someone who has experience with GIS. Um, so if anybody's listening who would like to uh, come on for a, a fairly well 
paid stipend this fall, let us know. <laughs> we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, the volunteer work and being able to help with uh, a lot of the trash pickup and things of that nature. Um, one of the other challenges that Austin is plagued by um, is is the challenge with homelessness and and and, uh, and, and really people sort of setting up camps uh, along uh, the trails and, and pathways. And, and so just like many other cities are around the globe, uh, we are not immune to that. Uh, go ahead and address that in terms of, you know, how the organization is trying to help support all the mi- many other entities that are involved with this, including the city, uh, trying to, to maintain a, a healthful environment. Because again, that when we're talking about trying to create an all ages and abilities facility, uh, it needs to be an environment where everyone feels welcome. That's true. You know, this is obviously a very widespread and complex issue across our city and many other cities. Uh, but Shoal Creek Conservancy has really been in the conversation with a lot of our nonprofit partners that also care for public park spaces or trail spaces, uh, as well as the Parks Department and the uh, Office of Homeless Services in Austin. So we have been in conversation about trying to find more alternatives to camping in parks. Um, You know, it's very difficult right now when there are laws against camping in parks. However, there's no alternative for places to go uh, for people who are camping. So if we do have enforcement that comes in from either Austin Police Department or the Parks Department that says, you know, this is illegal to camp here in this park or on this trail. You need to leave and, and pack up your belongings. You know, folks typically don't know where to go because there isn't another place for them to go legally. So a lot of times folks just end up on the other side of the creek or in a different park that's adjacent to another park where they were evicted. So a lot of the work that we've been involved in is uh, supporting partners who do outreach and uh, provide services for people experiencing homelessness like the Other Ones Foundation. They work very closely with our team and even send their workforce first crews out to Shoal Creek Trail to do some um, cleanup work. And we also have been working with our nonprofit partners to become a a cohesive voice from the parks community to find intermediate camping uh, locations where people can have an alternative place to go that's not the hotels or other permanent housing that takes upwards of 18 months to get into. Yeah, yeah. I paused on this particular image because it's uh, it's one of many activity assets that we're going to uh, run into along the trail here. This is the skate park. And so you'll see skateboarders over here. You'll see uh, folks on BMX bikes doing tricks in there. Uh, the other day, I think when I was filming this, uh, a gal was on rollerblades and she was doing all sorts of really cool tricks and, and, and all that in there. And so that's another key point is that this, uh, this particular trail is a absolutely marvelous connector to other activity assets, you know, other parks and other park facilities. So good stuff. Right. And just in this area, you also have the Ninth Street BMX Park next yeah. to Duncan Park. And then just north of there is House Park. So there's just tons yeah. of uh, amenities in this area. We're about to get into um, an area here that is uh, a couple of different things. One, we're going to be able to see the the juxtaposition um, of the, the trail, and it's obviously very narrow through here with the very, very busy Strode, the street road hybrid uh, that is Lamar uh, Boulevard here. Uh, but we're also going to hang a left here in just a moment and, and take a peek at uh, Pease Park. So ta- take a minute to just kind of talk about um, what's special about Pease Park and that relationship that you guys guys have with uh, with the park and I think they have a conservancy too. Yes, for sure. So this around 15th Street Here is we. where there's this pedestrian and bike bridge going over Shoal Creek. You can very comfortably cross here and enter Kingsbury Commons, which is the southernmost portion of Peace Park. Right. So this is an area that was recently revamped through many many different projects uh, led by the Peace Park Conservancy. And if you're interested in finding a splash pad or a uh, amphitheater or 
uh, basketball courts, there's just tons of great new amenities in the park thanks to those projects. Uh, the Shoal Creek Trail, as we're looking at right now, uh, has always run in this vicinity to the creek, which is just to the right of, of our camera view. Um, and so that section of trail is remaining. It has not gone anywhere. It has been enhanced and you'll see some new plantings along it. So it's really a nice experience to walk and bike the Shoal Creek Trail on this segment of Peace Park. Um, another thing that folks will ask about is, you know, what's the difference between a paved trail and a crushed granite trail or a dirt trail? And really, they're all open to any user types. You can bike on this, you can walk on the, the paved trail, you know, they're all open to various user types. However, um, the goal in the future is to have these more natural surfaced nature trails in addition to what we call the urban trail. So something that is paved, something that is wide and ADA accessible. So there's always an available connection no matter what user group you fall into, if you need a mobility device, if you have, uh, you know, small kids or stroller, it, it, we really are hoping to see connections throughout the entire corridor of both um, trail types. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and now we can see we're going a little bit further north along here. And um, we're starting to get to uh, an area of the trail where, uh, the conditions get a little rougher. You can see that the the, the concrete is, is pretty chunked up. Um, mm -hmm. But we also get to a point where um, the trail just kind of abruptly ends. Talk a little bit about that uh, in the context of some of the challenges um, and, and, and maybe how, I mean, I ended up having to go backwards and going back over that little bridge and then getting out on the sidewalk. Is there going to be like a future bridge that'll get us over or what's sort of the plan for this segment? So just for the, the quick backstory, uh, as with any natural nature scape uh, trails in nature, you know, there are going to be unforeseen things that happen that are out of most people's control. Uh, one of those happened in 2018 when a landslide came down over the western banks of Shoal Creek covering the Shoal Creek Trail. So just north of 24th Street where we're heading on this, this journey here is where part of the trail is currently covered and closed off. So if you are biking along Shoal Creek Trail or hiking along uh, near 24th Street, uh, if, if you're heading north the way you are in this vision, this uh, video, you can actually go up to the street level and cross over to the east side and continue along Shoal Creek on the east side of the creek. But currently, there is a big gap uh, on the west side that is not passable unless you are comfortable going down into the creek bed and crossing. Now, the creek is dry right now, and it typically isn't that particular location. So it's possible to do if you feel um, able to, you know, walk down some steep steps and then walk across a, a rocky creek bed and then back up some steeper steps on the east bank. Not everybody feels comfortable with that. So we really do hope to have a much more ADA accessible uh, crossing in the future. The issue right now with adding something like a bridge or a low water crossing at this area where the landslide has happened uh, is that it adds material to the floodplain. And so there are a lot of restrictions around adding any kind of infrastructure to the creek channel or the creek banks that could potentially impact um, flood risk. So that is something that we've been working with our partners at the Parks and Rec Department and the Watershed Protection Department to see if there are any alternatives or any ways to find a variance to, to make um, a crossing here safer and, and more accessible. I think it's critical for the future, but in the, the meantime, uh, like you said, you know, going back up to 24th Street or going back down to that bridge uh, that gets you into Kingsbury Commons are the more I guess, comfortable and, and accessible alternatives. Yeah. And here we are. Now we're back. <laughs> some some of the viewers and uh, may have noticed the the trees that were painted blue. Uh, we didn't uh, have a moment to, to, to 
comment on that, but that is essentially a, an art installation uh, to draw attention to um, what we might lose in our environment. And so it's an environmental art installation. And so uh, that is a water-based formula. It's not paint. It's not damaging to the trees. Uh, but that particular um, artist, uh, Constantine uh, Demopoulos is his name, uh, um, you know, has, has done that so that we can draw attention to, uh, you know, the trees and what we could lose if we don't take care of our trees. So that's what that was all about. And here we are, we're uh, again, you know, kind of moving along. Here's uh, more activity assets, the, the sand volleyball courts. I happened to catch it in the middle of uh, a mid morning on a hot July day. Uh, nobody was playing uh, sand volleyball at the moment, but frequently there are. But more importantly uh, to, to highlight is that disastrous road right next to there, the, the Lamar Boulevard. But this is a critical uh, piece of infrastructure that was built again uh, within the last five years or so because it helps get us under a, a busy uh, street. So talk a little bit about this particular bit of infrastructure. Yeah, this goes under that 24th Street Bridge that we were just talking about, and it is what we would call an urban trail where it's wider, it has the dual track line down the middle, there's protection on the side to prevent uh, anybody from you know, going over a steep bank. Um, and there are even some reflectors and lighting under the bridge as well, I'm pretty sure. And so this is a uh, example of what we would like to see the entire way along Lamar Boulevard where we have uh, you know, a, a paved trail that is acting more as a sidewalk currently, but could act as much more with some improvements that look like this. So that's a, a goal of the Shoal Creek Trail Plans and actually has some um, designs in the works for upcoming uh, connections that look very similar to this within the next mile north of this area. Right. Now, you've mentioned it earlier when you were talking about the 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 parks department and uh, public works with the you know urban trails it just it speaks to the the level of complexity in terms of all the different agencies uh the watershed department all the different agencies that that you all need to to be able to to work with as partners um especially when it comes around to building stuff because you guys aren't actually building anything that's right. And we're not the owners or operators of any of these spaces. Um, some of the local organizations have a public private partnership with the city of Austin, such as the trail foundation with the Butler hike and bike trail and peace park conservancy with peace park. So they're able to do capital projects and installation, uh, within those public spaces. Shoal Creek conservancy is not, we do not follow that uh, type of business model. So a lot of our improvements are advocacy based and we work, very closely with those partners of the city to identify funds and advocate for additional funds that are available for these public improvements. Um, so like you said, it's, it's a fairly complex web to detangle. And I think most residents don't have the time or interest in learning who, <laughs> you know, the best trail advocate is going to be within six different city departments. And so that's really where our team comes in being able to focus full time on building those relationships and having conversations about you know, where uh, the community wants to see these assets built. Yeah. I mean, you know, as a visitor to a city or as a resident, you just kind of look at it and think the city, you know, just it's like, oh, it's all <laughs> part of the city. You know, it's like, you know, wh who, who's taking care of stuff and, and why isn't this landslide been cleaned up yet? And, and, and all of that. So, yeah, this is a still shot on uh, that devastating landslide that took place a couple of years ago or so. Uh, and I think you had said that it took out like uh, over 100 feet of linear feet of the trail. So just really devastating. And the trail will probably never be on that site again, correct? In the current view, we're, we're not anticipating this to be accessible again in the near term, no. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're gonna have continue, uh, you know, making our way north uh, bound here. And um, a as we do this, uh, Talk a little bit about the challenges as we get further and further north. Um, and by the way, this is actually going to stop 
um, this B roll is going to stop right when we get to the Shoal Creek Boulevard um, uh, on road uh, facility. So here's a look at that detour sign. Um, because you and I did a recording before. And so I'll have a link to the Shoal Creek uh, Boulevard protected bikeway, the cycle track um, community party. And so if folks want to see that, if you haven't already seen that, um, uh, you can see Ivy be interviewed on that particular day, which was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I think it was in- A couple of years younger. Yeah, a couple of years younger. It was, ju <laughs> it was just before the pandemic <laughs> came in. So, mm -hmm. But to talk a little bit more about uh, what we're looking at now as we continue heading northbound here. So this is uh, an interesting place that's sort of a transition for the trail. We're leaving the Shoal Creek Boulevard dog park area and going back into a more wooded segment of the trail. But on the left side of the trail here, you see actually a lot of backyards. So this kind of begins a trend that continues for the rest of the trail's distance where we're really bordering private property on a lot of the Shoal Creek Trail. And that comes with, uh, you know, some great access for folks who live nearby, but it also comes with some challenges since that is not land that the Shoal Creek volunteers can do work on. It's uh, not land that the city can build on necessarily. So there's just a, a variety of changes and challenges that come with um, trying to improve areas that are constricted by someone else's private property. So I'd say that's possibly one reason why this particular stretch of trail is very substandard. You're highlighting some of the um, kind of buckling trail segments and raised manholes. It, this is not what I would call uh ADA in any stretch of the imagination. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's there's a ton of needs on this particular segment. And it's also a trail that was built decades ago. So yeah. it's really high time for some resurfacing and, and improvements here. Yeah, um, and you saw that you saw that transition too. I mean, the segments that were most chunked up and most uh, challenging also happened to be the steepest segments of it. And then when we got up mm -hmm. to the leveler portion, we're back on the natural surface and then onto some older um, asphalt uh, area here. So the you know there there is going to be that challenge is that the topography is also uh, a bit of a challenge and uh, in those steep segments. I mean when water rushes through it'll it'll mm -hmm. undermine you know quite a few things so it's not an easy task not impossible right. but not an easy task but yeah but this is a beautiful part of the trail i mean it, it's it, it's just you get into the tree canopy here and your stress mm -hmm. level goes down you're not right next to lamar boulevard so it, it's you know just a, mm -hmm. a really really special area and as you're crossing this little bridge here, you could actually stop just to your right. If, if you had the luxury of stopping and reading that historic plaque, mm -hmm. uh, that actually is a historical um, and, and um, commemorative plaque for Janet Fish, who was a resident that grew up along Shoal Creek, who spent her own time and money in the 60s to have a major stretch of the Shoal Creek Trail paved and, and built out to be more accessible to the rest of the community. And she's kind of one of the, um, the guiding mothers of the trail that we look to within our work at Shell Creek Conservancy. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So we're, we're actually going to be heading up, uh, to be able to get to, um, the, the roadway here. And the reason why we're doing this at this particular part, the trail does continue and, uh, it is possible to ride along that trail. Uh, but it gets a little bit more technical because there is like a, a, a cliff overhang and you sort of have to duck underneath, uh, and, and make your way through, uh, on the way back, I did actually ride that. I, I rode under, but it's it's really hard to film <laughs> when you're doing that because it's really <laughs> low. Uh, but this is some new infrastructure. Talk a little bit about uh, some of, of this work that has been done here because it seems like it's just an on-street thing, but it's a critical trail connector too. So this area is just kind of a, a variety of pedestrian improvements that are part of the safe uh, intersection improvements that have been going in along the Shoal Creek Trail, um, especially north of 38th Street. There have been many of those types of uh, improvements where there's just some kind of 
texture change on the pavement for pedestrians who are crossing. So, you know, slow down, you're about to get into the intersection, beware of cars. There's a lot of the painted bike lane arrows that has, have been added uh, up and down Shell Creek Boulevard. So cars know to expect bikes to be there and to look out for them and just be extra aware. Uh, as we're continuing north here along Lamar, you see, yes, not only is it just close to the road and noisy, but it is extremely narrow, extremely tight. And you have the added challenge of some overgrowth coming through the bars here. So this is a, an area that's of particular interest right now um, and currently being explored for improvements uh, to, to possibly change this from a sidewalk to maybe that urban trail uh, view that you saw earlier closer to the 24th Street Bridge. Um, this trailhead that you see to the left goes down to that area that you said is more technical. Uh, I personally, if you're walking, not biking, but if you're walking, that is my favorite oh, it's place nice. along yeah, It's Shoal so Creek. nice, yeah. It's like it's almost like it. a grotto sort of feel, you know. It you, is, you, you yeah. feel that coolness because you're, it's almost like you're going through a cave and, and all that. So, so walk us through this. Uh, this is, what, 31st Street, is that what it is? It is. Okay, so what are we, what are we looking at here? So this is an area that's on street connecting. It's, it's the area between uh, the 31st Street intersection where the trail really ends. And it's connecting to another trailhead uh, that is a little further ahead in the video. But really up until a year ago, there was just nothing here. People would either just walk in the road or they would have to cross the road, walk along the sidewalk and then cross the road again to get back down to Shoal Creek Trail. Uh, and so what you're seeing on the ground right here is some painted lines, some barriers. Uh, unfortunately, there's a truck in this, this lane <laughs> at the moment, but um, there's these flex posts and, and lines delineating a pilot project. And this is piloting the concept of having an in-street hike and bike trail to connect those two previously disconnected segments. Uh, those two stretches really uh, encompass the, the biggest missing gap of the current Shoal Creek Trail system. So having this on-street pilot project has really given us a lot of uh, hope for closing that remaining gap and having a much safer connection throughout the, the uh, first, you know, three, four miles of the Shoal Creek Trail that have been the historic section. Right here, there's the potential for a paved trail to connect what we just came off of on the street to the upcoming paved trail ahead. Uh, since this is still a pilot project, the pavement has not gone in, but you can see where you're sort of directed to go across the grass onto this trail. And then this trail will cross over 34th Street um, onto the trail within Cedar Springs Park. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and this is kind of a neat little segment here. You go across and then you, you go over this old bridge and then, uh, and then you're back on a, a, a little portion of the, the trail again. And, uh, and before long, you're at the, the Shoal Creek uh, Boulevard, uh, you know, two-way cycle track that we've referenced a couple of different times. Talk a little bit about that segment that we just went through and the challenge of being able to navigate that. I mean, change is hard and, and you're changing the streetscape. Uh, and I don't mm -hmm. know if people noticed, but we were rolling right past a school. So I'm sure there's all sorts of mm -hmm. drama along that. As your organization, how are you helping you know the city kind of navigate that? Because obviously your constituency, your group is is very much wanting to, to see that consistency and, and to see that gap closed. Absolutely, yes. Having all gaps closed as seamlessly and as um, logically as possible is really the goal of the Shoal Creek Trail Plan. So whatever seems like it is the safest for a non-native user, so someone who has just never been to the trail before to continue on, that's what we want to see with our trail connections. And so the way that that pilot project is showing the connection, it allows people to come off of either the sidewalk along the mar or the trail that goes through Split Rock Canyon and then immediately turn left onto the street and have a protected lane to 
bike or hike through to get to the next segment of Shulford Trail. That's really a what we consider to be the lowest barrier to access uh, when using the trail. So that's something that we've been advocating for in conversations between um, the city of Austin with some of the other stakeholders in the area who have varying ideas about what kinds of connections should exist there. Um, this area, Shoal Creek Boulevard, that you're turning onto now uh, is a similar project that was completed in 2020 where, you know, it, it's a, a bike lane that is added to an existing roadway. And that roadway has existed previously to serve only cars, and that's what people are used to. But yeah. if you have a, a bike lane that's, that's added in, you know, the thought is, over time, folks will understand the required slowing of speeds on that road and see the benefit of having more access and more uh, safety for cyclists. And especially on that Shoal Creek Boulevard stretch, we've just seen tons of use. It, it's exploded with users from you know very experienced cyclists to kids whose parents now feel comfortable letting them ride down the road to a park or to a friend's house unassisted. So it has just been a huge change in um, perception and accessibility that we're happy with. Thank you all so much for watching this excerpt of episode number 148 featuring Ivy Kaiser, Executive Director of the Shoal Creek Conservancy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend and leave a comment down below. And sending a big, huge thank you to the Active Towns Ambassadors uh, supporting me on Patreon, as well as the new uh, Buy Me a Coffee campaign. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>